the assembly of bodhisattvas sutra together with all the bodhisattvas mahasattvas dharma prince manjushri ajita bodhisattva ganda hastin bodhisattva nityo diu da bodhisattva and others such as these own great bodhisattvas and together with chakra chief among gods and the numberless great mantitos from all the heavens commentary not only were the sixteen venerable ahas present in the assembly but there were also all the bodhisattvas mahasattvas the great bodhisattvas what is a bodhisattva bodhisattva is a sanskrit word bodhi means enlightenment and sattva means being the word means to enlighten with those with sentience that is to cause living beings to wake up bodhisattva also means enlightened among beings because bodhisattvas themselves are awake enlightenment is simply the opposite of confusion confusion is simply non-enlightenment with one enlightened thought you are a buddha with one confused thought you are a living being with every thought enlightened in every thought you are a buddha with every thought confused in every thought you are a living being bodhisattvas are beings who can wake themselves up every day they are more enlightened not more confused Bodhisattvas are enlightened beings and living beings are confused beings. Enlightened beings are those who are enlightened among all the confused living beings. In all situations, they are awake. And so it is said, if you see a fence and are awake, you can transcend the world. If you see a fence and are confused, you fall beneath the wheel. Bodhisattvas transcend the world. Living beings fall beneath the grinding wheel of sense objects. The difference between bodhisattvas and living beings is, a, is that of enlightenment and confusion. We say, enlightened, you are a Buddha. Enlightened, to you are a bodhisattva. Confused, you are a living being. Manjushri Bodhisattva Manjushri, also Sanskrit, means wonderfully lucky or wonderful virtue of the bodhisattvas he is foremost in wisdom and is also known as the great and wise manjushri when the bodhisattva manjushri was born ten auspicious signs manifested to indicate that his merit and virtue were complete and his wisdom foremost the room was filled with bright light when manjushri was born a bright light filled the room. It was not the light of the sun, moon, stars, or lamps. It represented Manjushri's great prana wisdom and great intelligence which can disperse all darkness. The vessels were filled with sweet dew. Sweet dew is the heavenly medicine of immortality which nourishes you and satisfies your hunger so that you don't need to eat. Sweet dew satisfies purifies and refreshes. Hungry ghosts who have sweet dew poured over their heads immediately get rid of their offense karma and obtain a good rebirth. This is called opening the sweet dew door. When it opens, the hungry ghosts run in and obtain their fill. Sweet dew filling the vessels represents Manjushri's use of the sweet dew of drama to rescue living beings. The seven jewels came forth from the earth. When Manjushri was born, gold, silver, lapis lazuli, crystal, mother of pearl, red pearls, and carnelian came forth from the earth. Why are they called jewels? Because they are rare. Whatever is scarce is precious. Earth, for example, is actually very precious. Without it, we couldn't sustain our lives. And yet, no one thinks it is special because there is a lot of it. If you try to give people a handful of dirt, they wouldn't want it. They just throw it away. Water, too, is essential for life, but no one prizes it because it's everywhere. All living beings depend on water for survival. Therefore, Lao Tzu said, 
the highest goodness like water benefits all things and yet does not content. It goes to places men despise and so it is close to the way. Water benefits all things but doesn't struggle. It would never say, hey flower, fortunately for you there is me, water, and so you have grown so big and bloomed so beautifully without me flower. All this day have come for you, you really should be grateful. It doesn't think in this way and it doesn't wrangle. Travelers will notice that water gathers in the lowlands. In places where men do not like to go, it lives where no one else wants to live and so it is close in its nature to the way. Water, fire, metal, wood and earth benefit all things, but because of their abundance, no one considers them precious. Trees are everywhere and so no one values them, but gold is a treasure because it is rare. In the land of ultimate bliss, where the ground is made of gold, dirt would be valuable. If you gave a clot of Sahar dirt to someone in the land of ultimate bliss, ah, it would be as precious as those ropes they are now bringing back from the moon. They are just ropes, but because they came from the moon, they are very valuable. If you sent a worthless clot of dirt to the land of ultimate bliss, everyone would exclaim, rare indeed. So the seven precious gems are called jewels because they are hard to find. Manjul Sri Bodhisattva has limitless treasuries of jewels. When he was born, the seven jewels welled up on from the earth, endless from the taking and inexhaustible in their use. Where are these treasuries? you ask. They are in the place where Manjushri was born. Can I go there? Don't be so greedy. The travel expenses would cost more than the jewels you'd bring back. So don't have this false thought. The gods opened the treasuries. Will turning sage kings have seven treasures? A golden disc, white elephants, jet women, horse, poles, ministers of the army, and gods to guard his treasuries. These treasuries were buried in the earth long ago and then forgotten. But when Manjushri was born, the guardian gods opened the treasuries so that the jewels could be obtained. Chickens gave birth to phoenixes. Chickens usually give birth to chickens, but when Manjushri was born, they gave birth to phoenixes. Phoenixes are auspicious birds, and seeing one is a lucky sign. In the analects Confucius wrote, the phoenix hasn't come and the river sends no map. I am finished. The phoenix appears when a wise man rules and things are right in the world. As during the time of Emperor Shun, uh, 2055 BC, 2255 BC, when these birds were commonly seen. During the time of Fu Xi, 2852 BC, a turtle rose out of the river with a chart on its back. The chart gave Fu Xi the idea for the eight trigrams, which combined to make the 64 hexagrams of the I Ching, the Book of Changes. But now, said Confucius, no, uh, one no longer sees such auspicious signs, thus I know that it's all over. To espouse the way and its virtue is of no use. Pigs gave birth to dragons. Dragons ordinarily give birth to dragons, and phoenixes ordinarily give birth to phoenixes. It's not too strange for chickens to hatch phoenixes, but when pigs have birth to dragons, dragon pigs with scales. Horses gave birth to chilin. Horses usually beget horses, but they had chilin, chilin, lions, and tigers are all called the king of beasts. The chilin is also an ostrich animal. In China, during the time of benevolent Emperor 
Tang Di Yao. Twenty three fifty six B C. There were many phoenixes and chieflings, and、uh, they were often seen. Later, when people's comic retribution grew too heavy, these auspicious creatures no longer appeared. Confucius wrote, "In the time of Emperor Tang Yao, the chieflings and phoenix abounded. That time, however, is not the present. So, what have you come to seek?" Chilling, chilling! How my heart grieves. During the time of Emperor Tang Yao, chillings and phoenixes often came into the world to roam around. Everyone saw them, but that time is not now. So, what have you come to seek? He said. When the sage Confucius was born, a chilling appeared. When his mother saw it, she tied a string around its neck. Near the end of Confucius' life, some hunters killed a chieflin. When Confucius saw it, he noticed that it had the string around its neck. It was the same chieflin. Seeing this sign, he sighed deeply, for he knew that it would not be long before he died. Chieflin, chieflin, how my heart grieves," he said. When Manzhu Sri was born, horses gave birth to chieflings, cows gave birth to white tie. The white tie is an extremely rare and auspicious animal. It's not like an ox, and it's not like a horse. It's not like a deer or a mule. It's not like anything at all. It looks like a horse, but has the hoofs of an ox. The grain in the granaries turned to gold. What else? Is golden grain? Can you eat it? You can exchange it for money and buy a lot of grain. You may say, "I agree." A grain of gold is very valuable. Elephants with six tusks appeared. Elephants usually have only two tusks, but when Manjushri was born, they had six. These are the ten auspicious signs which appeared at Manjushri's birth. They represent the ten paramitas. Giving, morality, patience, vigor, concentration, wisdom, skill in means, vows, determination, and knowledge. They show that Manjushri is not like other Bodhisattvas. If you would like to meet Manjushri Bodhisattva, you must first remember these ten signs. Then, when you see him, you will know. This is my old friend and closest good knowing advisor. Manju Sri will be very pleased. Yes, you are my old friend, my very good friend. He will say, although he doesn't discriminate. If you don't know him, he won't approach you. The better you know him, the closer he comes. Therefore, we should know the states of the Bodhisattvas so that we can be their brothers and friends. All the Bodhisattvas are our good knowing advisors, and in the future. We will be bodhisattvas too, so don't take yourselves lightly. Ajita, ajita is Sanskrit for invincible. Ajita bodhisattva is none other than Maitreya, compassionate, kind bodhisattva. He specializes in cultivating the compassionate heart samadhi and is compassionate toward all living beings, scolded, beaten, treated, insulted. No matter how badly he is treated, he is compassionate in return. No matter how obnoxious living beings are, he protects them all even more lovely, lovingly than he would protect his own sons or daughters. His compassion of and living and and loving concern are limitless and boundless. In order to cultivate the compassionate heart samadhi, you must first practice patience. And so, Ajita Bodhisattva wrote this verse: "The old fool wrapped in ragged clothes, his belly filled with gruel. He mends old sacks to keep him warm, and lives on trans old fool. A scolding makes a fool smile, smile sweetly, while a beating makes him sleepy." Spit on his face, he lets it dry, and saves his strength and energy. His calm and a peace past ridicule gets him the jewel within the wonderful. Now that you've heard this song today, 
Why worry about not perfecting the way? The song is about a stupid old man who wears a patched robe and eats his food plain, without soy sauce, hot sauce, or sesame oil. He doesn't taste like much, but it fills his stomach. He mends his robes to stay warm, and whatever happens just happens. Something happens, and he reflects it. When it passes, he is still. Everywhere, according with conditions, as the years and months go by, minding your own business as the time passes. When it happens, it happens. When it's over, it's gone. He accords with conditions and does not change. Does not change, and yet accords with conditions. For him. In movement, there is stillness. In stillness, movement. Both movement and stillness are still and moving. But we won't speak about it too deeply. If we did, it would be difficult to understand. Scolded, the old fool says, "Great! If someone hits him, he falls asleep. Now, isn't that stupid? If ordinary people were hit, they would glare and shout, 'Why did you hit me?'" But the old fool just falls asleep. Isn't this wonderful? If you can master this, you are doing pretty well. You have truly gained some genuine cultivation. Spit in my face, says the stupid old man, and I just let it dry. If you spit in someone else's face, the fire of ignorance would blaze thirty thousand feet into the air. How can you insult me like that? He'd say. But the old man doesn't even wipe it off. He just lets it dry. Although it's not much effort to wipe it away, he still saves his strength and gives others no affliction. This is paramita. If you can sleep when people hit you and let their spit dry on your face, this is santi paramita, the perfection of patience. If you do not understand this, what Buddha drama do you understand? Do you study? Do you study day in and day out? But when this happens, you don't know what drama it is. If someone hit you to test your skill, you'd probably end up saying, "I have studied the Buddha drama for so long. Why can't I use it when the time comes?" The paramita is the wonderful within the wonderful, the jewel within the jewel. If you heard this news. How can you worry about not perfecting the way? The Buddhas and Bodhisattvas would never deceive you. This then is what Ajita Bodhisattva had to say about the perfection of patience. And if we practice accordingly, we shall certainly realize the way. Ganta Hastin and Niti O Dukta. Ganta Hastin is a Sanskrit word which is interpreted as never resting. Nityo Dukta, also Sanskrit, means ever vigorous. Ever vigorous and never resting competed with each other. One was vigorous and the other never rested. One never rested and the other was vigorous. They watched each other. If you don't rest, said one, then I'll be constantly vigorous. If you are ever vigorous, replied the other, then I won't rest. In the six periods of the day and night, they practice the way, each acting as the other drama protector. They raised every step of the way, and neither would let himself fall behind. Thus, Gandhastin is just nityodhyukta. Ever vigorous is just never resting. These two have cultivated together as drama friends. For the midless compass, if you work hard, I work harder. If you increase your efforts, I double mine. They are genuine cultivators, ever vigorous and never resting. Nityo, Di Upda, and Gandhastin. Chakra, and the mantitos from heavens. Chakra, chief among gods, and the numberless great mantitos from all the heavens. Chakra. Or Sakro Devanam Indra is the ruler of the Jagyashrimsha heaven, the heaven of the thirty-three. He is referred to in the Suragama Mantra as Yintuolaye. Those who understand the Buddha Dharma know that all gods, ghosts, and spirit kings, as well as all the great bodhisattvas, 
are contained within the Suragama Mantra. Those who do not understand the Buddha Dharma say, Buddhism does not include the heavens, the 28 constellations. They say this because they don't understand that the heavens and the constellations, everything is within the Suragama Mantra. Chakra is Sanskrit, it means the able heavenly ruler. Numberless and great multitudes from all the heavens. Numberless, the heavens cannot be counted. In general, there are 33, but if you were to describe them in detail, you would speak of the limitless heavens within each heaven, just as, just as there are also limitless ones within each world and limitless countries within each country. Thus, many heavenly beings were presented in the assembly.